So obviously I'm not here today. Um, my son got sick yesterday, but I still wanted to make sure you guys would at least get the intro lesson to medical terminology. So Tiffany's coming in today. She's gonna be in the back of the room. Hey Tiffany, you're doing a great job. Um, but if you guys have any questions about your medical terminology packet, she does know this stuff. So you guys can ask her if she doesn't know the answer. Don't worry, I'll be back on Friday and we can kind of run through this, but I just didn't want us to get too behind. So. Um, I came in to teach you guys a lesson on medical terminology. So I know you guys have probably gone to the doctor before, and when you guys have gone, your doctor may have given you a diagnosis, and he may or she may have used words that you have never heard before. So they may have said something like myocardial infarction, or they may even have shortened that to MI, and you have no idea what that means, but then they explain it to you and they tell you that it's a heart attack. And you might be like, well, why don't you just use the word heart attack? In the medical field, we use medical terminology, which is literally like learning another language. So if some of you guys are taking Spanish, Spanish 2, um, or you're a native Spanish speaker, or you speak French, German, any other Latin-based language, those will kind of give you a leg up as we learn medical terminology, because a lot of our word roots and root words, prefixes, suffixes, however you want to say it, um, are going to be based in Latin and Greek. So let me kind of move ahead. Just like in English, um, medical terminology has four basic elements, the word root or the root word, combining form, suffix, prefix. Now I'm gonna tell you guys the combining form changes, which is kind of what trips people up. So I have this packet designed to give us a lot of practice, but don't let that combining form trip you up. But the suffix is gonna be found at the end of the word and the prefix is gonna be found at the beginning of the word. So these two are gonna kind of alter the word root. The word root is typically gonna be the foundation of the word. This is typically gonna be relating to a body part, an organ. This is how we kind of figure out uh, what we are referring to. So all words have at least one word root, but there are a couple that will have two. So for example, when we talk about um, a red blood cell, Red blood cells, when we talk about them in the medical terminology, have two word roots. So we call them erythrocytes, sites being cells, erythro meaning red. So anyway, you can add other elements to then complete the word after you have that word root. And it says some of these are gonna be derived from Greek or Latin. And here are some examples of word roots I'm sure you guys have heard before. So Dent is an obvious one. That one means tooth. I'm sure you guys have gone to a dentist. You've gone for a dental cleaning. Dermat means skin, so dermatology. Um, dermatologist, dealing with, there's a lot of lotions that'll actually have that in there. We know that cardia or cardio means heart, and so that's gonna relate to a cardiologist, or if somebody has to do a cardiovascular activity, we know that's involving the heart. Gastro means stomach. So if you ever go see a gastroenterologist, gastro means stomach, entero means inter, sorry, entero means intestines. And so that's somebody who looks at your stomach and your intestines. And then I feel like this one's kind of makes kind of sense, but it's pancreate means pancreas. So those are kind of word roots you guys should know. Now, please know that we try to make medical terminology as easy to pronounce as possible. So in order for us to do that, we sometimes have to change the combining form. It may make the word root easier to say with the combination of a suffix or a prefix. This probably doesn't make any sense, so let me give you guys an example. The combining forms, and it's typically gonna be a vowel. So instead of being gastra, we typically would say gastro. So when we say gastroenterologist, that O can change from an O to an A to an I to an E. It just depends on what the need is to be able to make the word flow. So that's the word root, that's the combining vowel. When you understand how the words are combined together and how they work, it's a lot easier for you guys to be able to break down these medical terms into smaller parts. So this is a really good example. We've got leukocytopenia. So Luke means white, and then this right here is the combining vowel, because really it doesn't end in an O, but if we said leukocyte, it would kind of be difficult. So leukocytopenia. Luke means white. Cyte, which is typically the combining form, is gonna be an E or an O. Cyte means cell, and then we have the combining form, and pina means decrease. So this is somebody who is lacking in white blood cells when they have this condition. Suffixes are gonna be added to the end, and it's going to help to modify the meaning of the combining, sorry, of the word root. So we're gonna add this to the end of the word, and when we add it to the end, um, it says we create a noun or an adjective with a different meaning. So the example that they give us is a term called scleroderma. So here we technically have 
hardening of the skin. So scleroderma, derma at the end would be the word root. And I know you guys just saw on the other page that derma ended at dermat. You can drop this ending to make the word flow. So they want it just to be scleroderma. And then that's the combining vowel is sclera. These are typical suffixes that you will see added into words. So AL pertaining to, so dental pertaining to the teeth, and then speaker we're gonna skip. Able is gonna be capable, is gonna be capable of being, so that one's gonna be playable. Oma, which is a tumor. So if you have something called a hematoma, it's called a blood tumor. That's also, we've used the term hematoma to describe bruising as before. So it's not technically like a tumor, but you can see a collection of that blood together. All right, so suffixes, here are other ones. Scope means an instrument to view. Um, rehexis is a rupture. So I'm trying to think of a good example of that and I'm completely thinking of it. Rhea means flow or discharge. So I know the very common one to think of right off the jet is diarrhea, which I'm sure we've all experienced at some point in time. But that's where you have a lot of flow or discharge coming out of you. Um, there's another way that we use the word rhea and it's with when you have nasal discharge. So if you have a really runny nose, we actually call that rhinorrhea because obviously rhino means nose, rhea means flow or discharge. And here's some more suffixes. They love to give you guys examples. Algia means pain, edema means swelling, and then ura means urine or urination. So next up, we've, they're gonna talk about a combining vowel is used to link one root to another root before a suffix that begins with a consonant and a combining vowel is not used before a suffix that begins with a vowel. So that's kind of how they use the rule for the combining form, whether they're gonna use one or not. It depends on whether the word root ends in a consonant or whether it ends in a vowel. And that's kind of harder to see, so just understand as we start to dissect these words, it's not gonna be as easy to notice. A prefix is a syllable or syllables placed before the word root and it alters the meaning. So here are some examples. I'm sure you guys have heard of them before. Hyper meaning excessive, pre meaning before, post meaning after. Um, and then we've got this example of hypoinsulinia. All right, so hypo would mean below. And then insulin is referring to a, um, not a chemical, but a substance that we create in our own body that helps us to be able to store glucose. So we have the word root of insulin, and then ema is a suffix, and that is going to end up breaking up and meaning low insulin in the blood. So it means that they don't have a whole lot of free-flowing insulin in their bloodstream currently. Um, so I'm going to skip this one for plurality because it talks about going to a different page. So now I'm going to give you guys directions on your actual um, assignment. Miss Tiffany is gonna be giving you guys a packet that looks just like this. I would suggest that you guys go ahead and the very first thing I would like for you to do is put your name on every single one of these pages because this entire packet is actually gonna be worth 121 points. So if you lose any of the pages, you're gonna be losing points. So make sure that your name is clearly written on every single one of these pages. And I will tell you that on each of the pages, there is going to be a name slot. So go ahead and utilize that. But when you get your packet, go ahead and tear off um, the beginning page, so the one that up here says it is the medical and dental terminology prefixes and suffixes, and on the back is going to be the word root. So go ahead and tear that off because it's going to make this a whole lot easier to work with. So then you're not trying to flip through the pages as you continually go, but you will actually have them sit it down and then you can kind of just copy it down. So the first worksheet that you guys are going to have is called the word root quiz. Word root quiz. Not great how I said that. I apologize. But you're going to want to use the dental and medical terminology word roots, which is going to be the shorter word bank. And I'm going to recommend that you go through these. And for example, it's going to give you the English translation first. So the first one says muscle. So in the medical and dental word roots, I'd have to look through and try to find muscle. So if I go over here, boom, here it is, muscle. Then I'm going to write in the blank, Mayo. And I'm going to continue to do that as I go through. So that has the English translations on the column on the right. And the column directly to the left is going to have the um, Greek or Latin based root. And the reason why most of our medical terms are in Greek or Latin is because a lot of our textbooks that go all the way back to the origin of medicine started with a doctor called Hippocrates or Hippocrates. A lot of the stuff he documented is written in either Latin or Greek, which is why a majority of the word roots are in Latin or Greek. Once you guys finish the word root quiz, 
you're then gonna go on to the prefix quiz and you're gonna flip that page over and you're gonna do the exact same thing on this side. So it's gonna have here the translated word. So it says outside and I would go down the column until I found outside and outside is ecto. So I would write that here in that margin. Once I finish all of these and I'd be careful, some of them will have two meanings for one word. So for example, I'm gonna give you one. So number 13, there are actually two different letter, or sorry, words over here. So we have buy and die, both of those mean two. You would need to write both of those in that category. When it comes to the suffix quiz, you're gonna use the suffix column, which is over here on the right-hand side, and you are going to be finding the appropriate translation for pain, inflammation, tumor. So we're gonna start with pain, which I did just tell you in the presentation is algia. So it's find pain, which is the English word, and I would write algia, which would be the correct suffix. Once you finish the word root, the prefix, and the suffix quiz, then things get a little bit more dicey. So I have here medical terminology identification, and I'm actually gonna go to the board to explain this one a little bit better. Okay, so number two on your packet is a word called pericarditis. So the first thing that you have to do is find the word root to know whether a word is a prefix or a suffix. Now this is where it's gonna get kind of dicey because some of them are technically diseases or um, medical terminologies that have two word roots that are combined, which does make it a little bit more difficult. But hopefully I can break down this word and you guys can figure it out on your own. But cardi is the word root here, and there's gonna be a line on the other side where you're supposed to write down the meanings of the words. So cardi means heart, which would mean that peri is a prefix. So I would write peri over here on the line, and peri means around. Okay, the next word that I can identify is cardi. Now I put a line down here because this combining form is shared by both cardi and itis. You will not find card, but you can find cardi, cardio, or cardia. So do me a favor, if you see the line underneath it, it's typically because the combining form is shared between one word and another. So cardi would then mean heart. So I'm gonna put a comma right here and I'm gonna write down cardi equals heart. And the last part of this, put another comma, is itis, I-T-I-S. And itis, and I'm running out of room on my board, means inflammation of, okay? So pericarditis translates to around heart inflammation of. So you guys are going to attempt to finish out this part of the packet. If you don't get through all of it, that's okay. Um, hopefully I will be back Friday and I'll be able to go over your answers with you. Um, I do like for you guys to try to do this one as independently as possible and then we will go through them and we will actually discuss all of the conditions or all of the medical terms that are being discussed on this side. But if you guys look at number eight, lymphoma, that's one where we talk about um, they share that vowel. So lipo and oma, if you guys see that underline, overline, the line where they intersect. So if you guys look at lipoma right here, you will see that it, the line goes from L-I-P-O and then above O-M-A. That's because you're going to have to find the word lipo and the word oma to be able to solve that one. But get through this as best you can. If you have any questions, that's no problem. Hold them for Friday if you want to even write them down on your packet so that way you can remember them. Um, I will be back on Friday to be able to answer them. Before you leave today, though, you do actually have to turn this packet back in. Okay, I don't want this packet leaving my classroom. Um, I want you guys working. I told you guys I don't believe in homework, so just focus on this today. You guys should be able to get through the first four pages together. You guys can go ahead, and once you get your packets, you guys can get to work. So hopefully I'll see you guys Friday. Have a great day.